welcome back. You are watching the Financial Planner. Now on the show today, we're taking a look at our um, financial health and we're sitting with the money doctor to get a sense of what our financial health looks like. We're going through a questionnaire that you would get if you ever walked into a financial planner's office. So we're going through these uh, questions with Sumit Vaid, who's a certified financial planner. Sumit, we're looking at all of this. So another key question that you'd ask any of your clients that came in is, um, uh, have you identified your financial goals with dates and amounts? What does that mean? Uh, that really means uh, is to try and ascertain whether you're saving or investing. The difference between saving and investment is uh, you save uh, basically income minus expenses saving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when you save for a defined goal, defined time period, defined rate of return, and defined risk, mm -hmm. it becomes investment. So we want to ascertain the goal so that people are aligning their goals to the amount they're investing, which has an end date and end objective. It's very, very important for any kind of a financial plan to be prepared. Right, and we were talking about this in one of our previous shows. In fact, for any of your financial goals, your dreams to come true, it's important that you're right write down what those goals are, whether they're short term, medium or long term, and then figure out whether you have the finances to make those, to meet those goals. Now, the next thing is you want to find out from your clients if their investments are diversified against across all asset classes. What does that mean? That basically means uh, uh, are people going overboard in a typical asset class, like for example, real estate, especially in India. If you go with families, real estate is one asset class which most of them understand mm. and most of their money is going into real estate because it, it has definitely given a good return, mm. but it doesn't give you a diversified uh, portfolio. So your risk is not getting covered by only right. taking a typical asset class. So we try and deliberately ask that question and so that we can analyze when we are doing a financial plan, are they diversified? Is their risk diversified? Is their return which is coming at adequate amount of risk? It's too much of a risk. So that's the objective. Right. And we know that your investments need to be diversified. And it's basically, it's telling people that don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Because if you do, for example, put all of your money in stocks, what if the market crashes tomorrow? That's right. And also another point which we want to highlight with this is to try and explain it to people that there is element of risk attached with all kind of investments. You cannot, uh, you know, uh, really plan your portfolios without understanding risk. There is no risk-free return. Okay. which is there. So you need to highlight, especially in India, because many a time we have seen families uh, who understand returns but do not want to understand risk, okay. which is not right. Risk is important for us to understand and then we need to decide how much risk which we want to take or what kind of return. Also, you want to know from your clients uh, the next question, which is what are the current investments you hold, shares, equity, mutual funds, debt mutual funds, bank deposits, government savings schemes, real estate. So that's another one of those questions that uh, Sumit asks his uh, clients, what are the current investments you hold. I want to talk about the rest of the questions that you ask. I'm going to go through them really quickly. I hope you're following along at home. Uh, one of the questions you ask is, do you leave a balance on your credit card rather than pay off the full amount? We talked about credit cards That's in right. one of our shows and uh, we know for a fact that one of the worst things you can do is leave some balance on your credit card. That's true. <laughs> and, 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 and another thing which is very intriguing many a time which we see in fam with families is they have surpluses but they still don't pay up credit card in time, you know, they just carry on without understanding what kind of cost are they paying for that particular credit card. Usually credit card is charging anywhere in between 20 to 30% uh, on a per annum basis, slightly more if you add up expenses mm. and that's horrific for us to leave that balance on a credit card without paying it because that leads you into debt trap. So it's a discipline oriented question. It really gives us an insight into what kind of family discipline it is there with money. Very, very important for financial plan. That's very important to know too. Now the next thing is, do you take on debt as a speculative action or for a lifestyle you can't support. What does that mean? Does it mean do you keep racking up debt because you want to go out party or buy yourself a luxury BMW when you clearly can't afford it? It's a habitual question, you know. It really leads them to tell us uh, what kind of a mindset that particular client family has. Uh, are they trying to live outside their means by borrowing money? Mm -hmm. Are they trying to go and create speculation activities like buying stocks, etc., and, and, and really investing based by, you know, taking up the loan itself? Both of them are really no-no to happen itself. And if we figure out this question while doing the particular financial health check, we give a big negative, and we then try and work with the family to try and get them out of this habit of taking money or borrowing money to speculate or trying to take money to buy some luxury item which they cannot afford or which they should not buy at this stage of their life. Okay, question number 13. This is like a very long exam and I'm pretty sure a lot of clients when they come into you, they must get very introspective at this point because these are questions that, uh, you know, it throws, it, it, it's at some level it throws a light on your own thinking is that you've never thought about these things and here you have it in a very clear cut fashion, a person sitting across the table and asking you these questions. What's their initial reaction when you ask them these questions? 
Uh, uh, the way we position it to them is equivalent to a health checkup. You know, yeah. we, we always tell them that uh, uh, you should get a health checkup done, and as you age, you should get it much more regularly. Right. And health checkups do take time. The same is financial health checkup. Right. We're doing it for them, and and they are once they understand it, they're they're pretty responsive, and especially they're shocked when they see the scores because we haven't come across families which is scored beyond 30, 40 out of the 100 out of this. Because, out of this. Yep. And speaking of age, so my, the next question that you ask them normally is, do you set aside money for your retirement? What's the normal response that you get? Uh, what is their sense of retirement do, do they normally have a clear idea of when they want to retire uh, in India they do have a clear idea of when they want to retire and when the answer comes towards setting aside money the answer is usually yes we have set aside a basket of money but not definitely for retirement or for any other goal and that's the problem area because you know if you are saving without a particular defined goal right. then there is a probability you'll end up you know using your emotions to decide where to spend that money do you feel that they also say that oh you know someone else is going to take care of me is that another is that another uh, thing that you hear quite often when when you meet your clients that's usually a byproduct of this so mm -hmm. so they are saving but they're not saving in a defined manner they're right. saving in a basket that results into a problem of let's say daughter's marriage and suddenly they'll go over budget <laughs> yeah instead of spending five lakhs which they thought they'll end up spending eight lakhs now that three lakhs is coming out of potential retirement that's the point when most of them say, no, no, don't worry, let's spend this money, my son will take care of it. And there is a right. problem in that. That's the wrong thing to do. That's the wrong thing to do. All right, we have four more questions. I'm going to zip through them. The first one is, do you have a detailed written will? Are all of your investments, bank accounts, and joint names? So let's tackle the one with the will over there. Do you have a detailed written will? Why is a will important? Will is uh, uh, the most important document, irrespective whether you have money or you don't have money with you. Because what will really does is, it's almost like leaving a legacy. A written legacy to try and pass on to whatever intellectual, whatever uh, uh, financial, or whatever any other kind of assets you have created with you, right. or over, over to your next generation uh, uh, in a seamless manner. In India, will is a very, very emotional subject. Most of the time when you talk will, people straight away taking, take it to heart saying that somebody is asking whether I'm going to die, and if I'm going to die, I'm going to we're all going to die anyways. <laughs> That's a fact, but but uh, people need to understand will right. equally is a fact they should do if they want it to be a, a, a smooth affair for their family after them. Right. There won't be any legal hassles or fighting over the finances uh, once the person has passed away. We have three more questions to zip through. We'll do that right after this. back here watching the financial planner now we're going to a bunch of questions to assess the state of our financial health so far things have been looking a little shaky uh, so let's finish up with the last three questions we were talking before we going into the break we were talking about why it's important to have a will uh, the other three questions are all related to your bank account so let's bring up the graphic and take a look at what uh, Sumit and financial planners would ask you if you went into their office so the question you ask is are all of your investments or bank accounts in joint names now for a lot of us we have salary accounts so or we open a bank account when we're young and we then for forget about it um, why is it important uh, for these accounts to be uh, joint accounts uh, see uh, you have to be prepared for any eventuality of life mm -hmm. so here is a typical case uh, something happens to a individual what will happen to those bank accounts which are only in his name what would happen to those bank accounts it will it? then go through a very cumbersome legal procedure in which uh, you know a court will then decide and give a jurisdiction who is going to be responsible for taking care of that money which is uh, unnecessary or creating uh, complications so who should be who should be uh, the, the nominee in the joint account if you're single Yep. And if you're married, uh, give me a sense of who you should put on those papers. So uh, it depends upon your comfort level, but the first level which we usually recommend is within family, mm -hmm. which is the immediate family itself, wife, kids, uh, uh, father, mother, brothers, to whom you trust. Uh, beyond that, uh, sometimes it's also very, very close friends, uh, which we try and advise itself, and then mm -hmm. the distant relatives like brother-in-laws or any such person. But the idea is to create a, create a scenario in terms of something happens to someone, uh, the money which are meant for certain things should go to those certain things, not get into the legal hassles. Not get into the legal hassles. And the, and the next two questions, in fact, relate to the bank accounts itself. If you ask, if no, that is, if, you, if your bank accounts or investments are not in the joint, uh, joint accounts, if no, do you have a power of attorney to operate those accounts? You can do that too. Yes, you can. Ha tell us how that works. Basically, power of attorney is, a again, a legal document which gives the right to operate those accounts in certain circumstances to a certain person. Hmm. Now, that's what it really helps in articulating uh, and and managing the risk in case of some eventuality happening. Most of the people do not do this, but if they do it, 
they are taken care of the least possibility of something wrong happening. Right. So the I guess the simplest way to avoid all of that is make sure that all of your investments and bank accounts are joint accounts. Well, with that we can wrap up this questionnaire. Wow, it's. Um, it throws a lot of light on you know the state of your own finances and like you said Sumit it's, it's a great way to take stock of your finances now for all these people who come in how do they normally do what's what's the sort of average response to all of these questions very very poor mm -hmm. you know the, uh, some of them are good in certain things most of the time we find investment is is a subject which gets taken care of all your right. risk oriented uh, subjects are not being taken care of but till date we have found very rarely a family which is even average plus kind of a situation which is an so, average plus so yeah. we did about 17 questions so but they how do they do like maybe 10 is okay 10 is bad what's the average so i'll 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 answer this in a score way we score it on a scale of 100 itself right for in our scheme if somebody scores is above 30 it's great but till now we have rarely found one or two families most of them are between 10 to 20 which is very very poor straight in fact I want to highlight to, to all the families which are listening to this right now saying it's very very important for you to do this checkup it will tell you where you are it will take care of your worries especially when you're sleeping first 10 minutes you always think about all these things <laughs> right. peace of mind get your financial health checkup done absolutely with that it's a wrap for now Sumit many thanks for coming in Sumit Red, our certified financial planner we hope that today's uh, financial health checkup answered a few of your questions also sort of made sense of where you should start looking at your finances we know that it's it's deeply troubling especially when it's been a lot of years you haven't paid any attention to it but there's always a starting point this was a starting point join us again the next time same time same place until then goodbye